Hello, this is Janet with Paper and Spark, and today I'm excited to walk you through the Square Seller Spreadsheet. This spreadsheet template is geared specifically for helping those who use Square with their sales online or in person at shows or in a physical brick and mortar shop. It helps you easily and quickly total your Square sales, your sales tax collected, your refunds, your tips collected, and your square fees each month. It also serves as a place to enter your receipts and your business expenses, and it will calculate your shop's net profit or loss each month. The Square Seller Spreadsheet is for sale at paperandspark.com, and your purchase includes a file, a spreadsheet file for 2016 and 2017 as of when this video tutorial is being filmed. It also includes a PDF guide with step-by-step -step instructions and this series of video tutorials. You can also add on access to the Accounting Accountability Club for $26 a year. The club includes access to our private Facebook group where you can ask questions, get support, and attend our monthly office hours. It also includes email reminders each month with personalized printable checklists to keep you on top of your bookkeeping on a monthly basis consistently. So if you tend to procrastinate when it comes to the financial side of operating your shop, which I know a lot of us do, I'd highly recommend checking out this resource the Accounting Accountability Club to keep you motivated and organized. You can open your spreadsheet file in Numbers, Excel, or Google Sheets. For purposes of the video tutorials, you'll see me working in Excel on a Mac. So let's start out just with a quick overview of what you're going to see on your monthly summary tab and all these tabs of your new spreadsheet down here. We've got Revenue or sales listed at the top of your spreadsheet and this is where you're going to enter all sales from your shop. We'll walk through how to import these blue rows which are your Square sales directly from Square's reporting system and we'll also be able to automatically import any refunds issued via Square or tips collected via Square. You also have space to manually enter sales from other non-square sources here in the revenue section because the goal is to see all your businesses sales right here on the spreadsheet not just your square stuff. Um, with the square seller spreadsheet I've added this new special green row called cash or check sales which is linking to this cash and check tab over here. Um, so this is where, like, if you're at a show and you get some someone writes you a check and you want to enter it into your spreadsheet, but you didn't manually enter it in your square, you can record it here on this green tab. And we'll cover how to use this tab later on also. Next, you've got your expenses section. And I've broken it up into three categories. Selling expenses, product expenses, and business expenses. And some of these expenses you'll enter directly on this tab, like in one of these cells. And for some of them, they're going to flow from one of the colored, the corresponding colored expense category tabs down here. Um, like I said, the rows are color coded so you can see where they're coming from, where these totals are coming from. And we'll cover how to use them later on. But I will also say that your blue square fees expense is going to be automatically entered for you when you do your square import each month. Finally, the spreadsheet is going to automatically subtract your expenses from your revenue to tell you your net profit or loss each month. And then you've got these two blue sales tax rows down here and these two rows are going to tell you how much you've been collecting in sales tax each month and your total in-state sales. We'll cover a little bit more about how these two rows work um, at the end of the tutorial video series. Now if you check out all these tabs down here, um, this one is for manually entering um, some cash and check sales from outside of Square. And then these guys are all um, expense category tabs. 
They're broken up into the three categories that I mentioned, and we're going to cover exactly how to enter things in these tabs later on. You've also got your monthly blue tabs here. This is where you will import in your square reports each month. And based on what you're importing into those tabs, you're going to get these automatic totals on the light blue rows on your monthly summary tab. So that's just a brief little overview of what your spreadsheet looks like and how it's set up. The easiest way to show you how to use this tool will be to walk through an actual month's worth of bookkeeping tasks. So let's start by importing an actual report from Square and going from there. Okay, so to import your monthly Square report into your Square Seller spreadsheet, you're going to log into your Square account and then click on Sales. And then you'll click Transactions. And then you want to select the month that you want to download. So um, normally I wouldn't do this until it's the end of a month, but for today I'm going to download April, even though April's not completed yet. So I'm going to do April 1st to the 25th, but normally do an entire month. This is just for examples. Okay, so once you've selected whatever date, whatever month you want to do, click the Export button over here and then select Transactions CSV from the drop-down menu. It's going to download onto your computer and you can open it in your spreadsheet software of choice. Okay, so when you open the file in your spreadsheet software, it's going to look something like this. Our next steps are going to be copying and pasting it into the applicable monthly tab of your seller spreadsheet. So to copy, you want to select all this data and the easiest way to do that is to click on this cell right here above the row 1 and to the left of column A. So you click this cell, it selects all the data, and now you can right click copy or control or command C or edit copy. And once it's copied, you'll navigate to the right tab, which is going to be April. We're copying in April right now. And then you're going to paste. And again, click that same little square right here to select your blank tab. And now you can right click paste or command V, control V, paste or edit paste. And now we have successfully copied and pasted that data into your April tab. To make sure that everything worked correctly, you can go back to your monthly summary tab and you should be able to see some amounts generating for April now. So I see square sales and square fees and sales tax collected in April now, so I know that I did it correctly. And that is how you import in all your square stuff from Square with just a few clicks of your mouse. So just a few words on exactly what your spreadsheet is totaling for you when you import in your square sales. Your square sales, um, they do not separately list any shipping that you charge your customers. So any shipping paid to you, they don't list that separately. It's all just included in the gross sales reported. You do have a discounts column here. And this amount is going to include any gross sales minus discounts issued. So these amounts here are after discounts, okay? Also, if you have sales tax collected, this is part of your gross sales. These are, um, this is considered income to you, all right? The sales tax that you collect. So these amounts right here include sales tax. You'll probably want to know the pre-sales tax numbers when you fill out your actual sales tax forms, and I'm going to tell you those down here, at least your in-state sales totals before sales tax collected. If you ever have any tips collected, they'll show up in this column and they will automatically sum up on this tips row here. The only other thing to note is how Square accounts for refunds. If you ever issue a complete 100% refund, like you're canceling an order and refunding the total amount, it will show up as a negative in the gross sales column. That means that it's going to already be included here in your gross sales. So if you issued a 100% refund, it's already going to be subtracted out here in the square sales row. 
If you issued a partial refund, these are going to show up separately in column J on your imported reports, the partial refund column. So you can see here we issued a partial refund of $6.35 for an order. These partial refunds showing up in column J are going to be totaled for you here in row 5 refunds. Okay, so complete full refunds are going to be automatically subtracted and reducing your total sales here in this row. Partial refunds are going to show up here in this refunds row. And that's just due to the way that Square reports your refunds. This is the easiest way to do it. Note that Square transaction fees are not included in any of these amounts. These are totaled separately here in your expense section. So now that we've imported in our April Square CSV file and gotten our total Square sales and fees for the month, I'm going to show you how to enter in a few manual cash or check sales in this green row. So remember, this is not um, this is not if you accept cash or check and you enter them in your Square app or your Square system, those will be included in your import and you don't need to enter them again here or you'll double count them. If you have cash or check that you accepted um, from another source that's not entered into your Square app, then you can manually type those in here. So let's say I'm at a show and someone um, handed me $20 cash and my Square app was down, so I just like made a mental note of it. And now I'm going to enter that here. So, I don't know. $20 from Cuba, and this was at craft show number two. You can enter the customer description and other. You can really customize these columns to be whatever you want. And that's what he bought. He bought a microphone. I don't know. I'm really, really bad at coming up with examples. But this is how you would enter it. Very simple, straightforward, self-explanatory. The only important thing to note is that these tabs all work based on your dates. Okay, so see how I entered 415 as the date? Now that $20 is going to show up here on my green row under April. You've got to enter your dates correctly though for things to flow to the monthly summary tab correctly. So you always want to enter in month slash date format. You can type the year if you want, but if you don't type the year, like if I just type 415, it's going to default to the current year I'm in. You can do zeros if you need to, like 04, 02, and it will still work. But what you don't want to do is um, like date slash month, like if you are not based in the U.S., um, if you enter the dates backwards, it's not going to work. And I can customize the spreadsheet to where it will work with other date formats, but that's something that you're going to want to contact me about to do. As it stands right now, everything needs to be entered in month slash date with backward slashes just like this, or, or these forward slashes, sorry, um, for things to flow correctly to the monthly summary tab in the month that they belong in. That's how that cash and check tab works. Then finally, right here, we've got three custom income rows that you can just rename to whatever you want um, to enter sales from other sales sources you might have other than Square or Cash and Check. So if you've got like some PayPal invoicing going on, you might rename these to PayPal sales. And you would just enter those directly where they go on the monthly summary tab. If you're using a Paper and Spark import add-on tool, like the Etsy import add-on tool, you could enter those right here as well. And that's what this would look like. So these rows here are for you to customize to better fit your needs because remember the goal is to have all your sales entered right here in one place so you can see your entire shop's total revenue for the month. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through how to use these expense tabs. Thank you.